are listening to Tech Vibe Radio. It's coming at you from the Huntington Bank Studios. Tech Vibe Radio is your front row seat to Pittsburgh's fast moving technology ecosystem. Tech Vibe is brought to you by the generous support of Blink at 321blink.com, Chorus Call at choruscall.com, C Level at C leveled.com, Compunetics at compunetics.com. Huntington Bank at Huntington.com, My Benefit Advisor at PTC.MyBenefitAdvisor.com, and PNC Bank at PNC.com. Here are your hosts, the Pittsburgh Technology Council's Audrey Russo and Jonathan Kirsting. Audrey, I am very, very pumped for today's broadcast of Tech Vibe Radio. It is great. We have we have an old friend. We that do is joining us again, and uh, we want to get here an update from Jet Store. Right? Exactly. I mean, it's been a while since I've heard from Gene. Gene's been on our show quite a few times. Gene Lazarevich from ACNC Jet Store. He's one of my favorite stories in Pittsburgh. Just about what he's done, what he builds, who his customers are. I just think are super exciting. So it's always great to catch up with Gene, and it's been like a year or so. So Gene, we're here for your checkup. You're you're yes, you're, you're really checking check so we can make sure you're doing okay. Under the hood. What's exactly. One yearly checkup. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> great to see you guys. You know, it's great. Uh, you know, always always fun with uh, two of you. I always have a great time. Um, and yeah, it's been a year. Um, you know, it's, it was an interesting year, but actually, yeah. uh, we've. Uh, I just looked at the numbers actually, and uh, we did thirty five percent growth. So we've done oh my really, really well in twenty twenty one. Yeah, it's wow. Uh, it was an amazing year. It's um, compared to twenty twenty. I mean, we've done extremely well and um wow. some of the things probably related to covid actually that pushed us into more you know getting more business because of covid right which is very interesting. because we have um one of the customers actually they do a video on demand and uh, as you know a lot of people are sitting at home basically watching movies and uh you know just entertainment so uh their um customer base uh, went like 10x so they actually ended up buying uh, so much storage from they us. They need more storage, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they actually put it in Denver. So we have uh, now two uh, data centers with them, one in Denver and one in Pittsburgh. And it's a Pittsburgh-based company, but um, you know they obviously surf you know, anywhere in the world and that's uh, all video on demand. And like I said, their traffic during COVID just, just, just went, went skyrocketed. Really- so, yeah, Gene, before we get rolling forward on this, just give our listeners a quick elevator pitch for ACNC and Jet Store because you do some great stuff, and I will not do it justice describing. I think you do the best job at that. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so um, I came here. Uh, actually, we celebrated another big thing, 30 years in Pittsburgh. We came yeah, here. Yeah, very cool. 30 years. I uh, came with my family uh, from Moscow as a refugee, as you know my story, and i um, it's been 30 years and uh, all in Pittsburgh. So, uh, you know, we well, love that... Pittsburgh. You know, Wait, so where was your hometown, Gene? I always forget. Moscow. I'm from Moscow. But it was yeah. from Moscow. Yeah. So I'm from gonna... Moscow. My wife is from St. Petersburg. And we met here when she was a CMU student. And we met online. But what? she was already a CMU student. Yes. So we and nice. we've been uh, married. You mean uh, this, is before, this is before Tinder and all that? Yes, before Tinder, before, <laughs> um, before anything like that. It was like a news group. We went on a blind date. Uh, It was, uh, yeah, exactly 22, 23 years ago. And, um, you know, the the rest is history. Uh, She was a CMU student from St. Petersburg. Uh, She actually was on a student visa. And she she always jokes because she always says that she didn't need the passport. And the rest is history. We've been together for 22 years. <laughs> that's just a great yeah, it's a very interesting story. Now, people when people look at me, they're like, you know, they don't believe that you know it's possible. It's possible to meet people online. But yeah, you're right. Now it's Tinder. So yeah, my kids using you know that. <laughs> oh, we won't go there. But let's talk you about, go there, about, right. about Jet Store. I, mean, <laughs> I love what your company builds because at the end of the day, you're building storage devices. I mean, you think about all the data, all the video, everything out there, it's got to be stored somewhere and it's got to be accessed quickly. And you build these devices right here in Pittsburgh and they're all custom and you've got some crazy cool customers. Yes, we do. So yeah, just um, you know, continue my story. So then yeah. you know, we incorporated in um, 1994. So in 2024, we're actually going to celebrate 30 years of uh, ACMC. Which is also a big milestone because you know we've survived for all these years through all these Absolutely. internet bubbles and um, you know all these different uh, um, you know many, all these thing events that happened. So um, and yeah, we've grew. Um, you know, we actually have um, 
so many customers. We have over 4,000 customers in all these years. Um, and, um, you know, we actually opened up um, uh, office in uh, like a remote office in LA. So we now have a person in, uh, on the West Coast, um, you know, and we have customers all over, um, you know, uh, all, all over the United States and all over the world. Um, so, um, but we do actually have uh, some good news. Like we have a lot of uh, Pittsburgh customers and last year we've got DQ communications, which is, I think, uh, PTC uh, member, right? Absolutely. Uh, we have uh, management science associates, data centers. Another member as well. Customer. Uh, yes, all Pittsburgh customers. Then we have uh, Elliot Turbo in Jeanette, uh, also a big customer for over 15 years. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, local customers. Uh, and then we have a uh, TerraSwitch is also uh, there, uh, they provide cloud services for uh, various customers. So we have uh, we actually gotten a lot of uh, local customers in the past few years. So which is really good. So because we, we all, you know, obviously we do a lot of work uh, nationwide and worldwide. So uh, actually, sixty percent of uh, UK police is using uh, JetStore, still really? using JetStore. Yes, yes, for um, forensics and uh, all of the data storage, all of the investigations and everything that they're doing. So. Yeah, we've been, um, we have a Jetstore UK as well, and um, they've been around for like 15 years since our partner. Uh, and so we, we do you know, a lot of work in uh, some work in Europe as well. So, uh, so yeah, and, um, uh, um, you know, as you know, um, I just actually looked the numbers and um, by 2025, the projected data growth is going to be 180 zettabytes. 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 So <laughs> I can't uh, comprehend that even. That's that is, ridiculous. That is, that is. That is actually very interesting because uh, uh, the zettabyte is thousand exabytes. <laughs> I had to look it up because I was going to say you lost me. <laughs> and the exabyte is thousand petabytes. Wow. wow. Uh, so this is this is quite a lot of data that's going to be. Uh, you know, generated by, and a lot of it, some of it is actually due to COVID because a lot of people are obviously mm. working from home. Um, you know, they're doing a lot of, again, you know, they're watching movies and, um, you know, they just, it's just a lot of data that's going to be generated and that until, you know, for next three years. So, and we hopefully will benefit from that as well as we always have. Um, you know, just like I said, we had 35% growth this year. So, which is uh, really, really good. Um, for our business. Uh, Absolutely. So, yeah, and we make it right here in Pittsburgh. We have a production facility right here in Bomb Boulevard and everything is custom made. Like you said, you know, we uh, basically uh, get the chassis and then we get the drives and then we put them together, we burn them and then we provide all the support, all, log all logistics right from here, from Pittsburgh, from Bomb Boulevard. So, so what's, much, yeah, go ahead, what's the year ahead? What's the year ahead? What do you think? Another 35% growth? I'm hoping, yeah, we actually have um, another uh, new customer uh, that's uh, also we uh, did a project with them last year. It's uh, a lot of cameras. So a lot of there's a lot of facilities uh, coming out in uh, West Virginia uh, and uh, they need to have they install a lot of cameras in these facilities and they have to record all the data. Uh, and in West Virginia, there's a law that you have to keep the data for two years. So it created a lot of uh, data and a lot of you know, business for us. And they committed to um, order more, um, uh, you know, storage from more Jetstar storage for this year. Uh, actually, four times more. Wow! Uh, and they, they Good lord! <laughs> Can you actually so, put uh, machines yeah. together fast enough? <laughs> yeah. So they, they you know, there's they have 500 cameras and they have to, uh, you know, I guess watch all these facilities. It's a new facilities that come in in uh, West Virginia. So. Um, it's actually, um, I mean, I probably, I can say it on the radio, it's a cannabis facility. So there's a lot no of, way. yeah, they can, Very they grow, good. they grow cannabis. It's all, you know, it's all, uh, you know, uh, now approved by, right. West Virginia and everything. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big cannabis proponent. Right. So right. So putting it out there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a big customer for us and, um, you know, it's a big facility in West Virginia and they put more and more of those. Uh, also they actually opened an office in Florida. So I don't know if they're going to be doing, they're going to be doing a lot of like communities in Florida. So there's going to be a lot of storage there as well. They're going to need your stuff, Gene. That's what I'm talking about. I like this. Absolutely. Yeah. Very exciting. Right. Yeah. Very yeah. exciting. So we're getting a lot of, you know, in surveillance, um, a lot of, um, we work with a lot of cloud providers, MSPs, managed service providers uh, as well. And, um, you know, yeah, we have, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll grow again. Uh, maybe, yeah, 30, 35%. We'll see. Well, I'll tell I, you what, Gene. I can't imagine when I landed here in Pittsburgh. <laughs> 
you know, I'll be sitting here and talking to you guys and, uh, you know, talking about all the success we've had. So that's what I love hearing. You've Appreciate passed your checkup with flying colors. Morning. Yes. Morning. We're very healthy. We're happy to report. We're going to have you back next year. So we can hear about the next 35% growth that you guys have all about building some of the absolute top end storage devices, custom made for customers around the world. We love it. We're so proud of what you're doing, Gene. We think it's pretty awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Glad, you know, glad to see you. And, um, you know, we'll see you somewhere in person, hopefully soon. So absolutely. If you yeah, go to stay, AC, stay. Absolutely. If you go to acnc.com, you can look about all the things that Gene has there. It's amazing. What a cool Pittsburgh story. All the more reason, Audrey, we need everybody from around the world coming to Pittsburgh to build companies like the way Gene did, man. Simple as that. Very cool. Very great. Cool. Great to see you, Gene. Great to see you. Absolutely. We're taking Thank you a so quick, much. Absolutely. We're taking a quick break and we're coming back with more Tech Vibe Radio. This is Jonathan Kirsting. And this is Audrey Russo. Audrey, we're from the Pittsburgh Tech Council, right? Uh, yes, we are. Absolutely. PGHtech.org. Learn all about us. We have awesome members, just like Gene Lazarevich in ACNC Jet Store. We'll be right back. Indirect technology spend is at an all-time high and continues to grow on the balance sheet year after year. This March 29th through the 31st, PASS, the global leader in technology spend analytics, will host the Accelerating Technology Procurement Summit at Heinz Field to discuss best practices and strategies in procurement of the category. The summit will cover topics like negotiation, relevant data, sourcing, and will feature executive level keynote speakers from Google, Oracle, KPMG, and many more. So sign up today at www.atp-summit.com slash register and use code TECHVIBE for $500 off each registration ticket. For more than a decade, Blink has been producing unique creative services and solutions that tell a story, move hearts, and drive decision-making that advances business objectives, your business objectives. We adopt a company-wide policy of candor, transparency, and a good old-fashioned work ethic in the pursuit of building long-lasting relationships with our clients and our partners. From video and design to strategy and digital marketing, Blink is here to creatively advance your business. Visit us at 321blink.com. All the cool kids are listening to Tech Vibe Radio, and so are you. Tech Vibe Radio is coming at you from the Huntington Bank Studios and is made possible by the generous support of our sponsors, Link, Chorus Call, Sea Level, Compunetics, Huntington Bank, My Benefit Advisor, and PNC Bank. Here are your hosts, the Pittsburgh Technology Council's Audrey Russo and Jonathan Kirsting. Welcome back. So glad you're listening to Tech Vibe Radio this Sunday morning. Up next is an excerpt from a podcast I just did with one of Pittsburgh's newest startups. It's called LifeBridge, and they are a medical device company, and they have a really cool product. you got to learn all about it. You're going to see right now that companies are building some really cool stuff here in Pittsburgh. Even cooler yet, LifeBridge is actually incubating itself at the Pittsburgh Technology Council's offices. Give this a listen. And if you want to listen to the entire podcast, just go to pghtech.org, go under the One Mic Stand tab under our podcast, and you can find it right there. Let's start with some introductions. So Swaggy, let's start with you. Tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do with LifeBridge. So my name, as you said, is we are shortening it Swaggy, but actually it's Swagatika. Um, I uh, did my master's in biotech from Duquesne University. In 2015, that's when I first moved to US. And in 2017, after I graduated, that was when I started uh, with the Bio Breakfast Networking and I first met Thomas. And we started the whole idea phase, brainstorming back, I think it was in, where was that? 2018. 2018. Summer. Yes, summer. We started that. And then slowly, slowly, and finally, we kind of have our first prototype and we are testing everything. So it's been really exciting. Definitely. And yeah, and I'm working like as a product owner and I'm also working in everything. We are all wearing different hats. <laughs> Absolutely. Now I see different hats. Sometimes Thomas wears a beret to work. It's kind of funny. 
<laughs> <I'm just being laughs> for sure no it's, it's i love seeing you guys around the office because i i see the hustle the bustle and the fury of a startup going on there and i get to yeah. witness from afar and it's great seeing you guys build this thing right in our offices which i think is just fantastic and so thomas you are no stranger to the tech council <laughs> and uh, it's been really fun watching you starting to get some traction on this so what was the idea behind LifeBridge and how were you able to actually lure someone like Swagatika over there to actually hang out with you? You know, I have a long tradition in health scale and I started with Siemens and developed a digital health scale to a time as everybody laughed about what is digital. And later I came here to Pittsburgh due to the merger of Siemens and Westinghouse and saw, oh, Pittsburgh, needs really a little bit digitization. Sometimes I saw, I need my own business. I want to be <laughs> part of entrepreneurship. And I said, I'm ready to rock the world. And so we came up with this because I was always in CMU. And there I was involved in how we are building smart cities and how we are measuring that we have a smart city because what you cannot measure, you cannot change to improve. If you see, we have in the whole US, the, the most uh, effective building, and that is the new PNC round tower, where we are measuring every room we have in a third floor, an IT center. And we know all about the building. But then I asked myself, why we are not having the measurement of the people? Are we not knowing what the people are doing. Right. We came up and discussed this. And that was the birth of, hey, we are all in sensor technology, but exactly. we are not using the best sensors for health performance measurements. And then we saw, we studied a little bit and Swiggy can tell a little bit why we starting this health scale. Yeah, um, I think well, what we saw is that in the healthcare, there's like, the healthcare system is really in, inefficient, let's say this right now. And there is in the hospitals or nursing homes, long-term care, all these uh, sectors, there is a lot of uh, room for error because everything has been done by hand. Uh, the accuracy of the data and the charting, there is a lot of things that can be improved in that area and all the vital metrics are being all recorded by hand. So if instead of all this, and there are also different devices, there's like one device for blood pressure, one device for heart rate, everything is all segmented. So what we thought is if we have one device that can do all this and all the vital metrics are being uh, done in one place and it also helps the nurses for the chart uh, because it's gonna all come out for them, then it would be so much more useful. It will improve the accuracy. It would give them more time to spend on patient care. So that's where we started. Yeah. I, I love the fact that you're inspired by like a smart building that's monitoring everything, realizing this could be applied to human beings. And so basically you're able to do this through basically like a ring, something similar to like what, what like an aura is that people are pretty familiar with where you put a ring on and it start, it's able to monitor all these mm -hmm. different functions. Tell us about this more. I'm, I'm, I want more details. Yeah, promise. Yeah, look, Aura is really a wonderful design, but I read a lot, what can we do? And remember, so 40 years ago, I developed all the laser sensor technologies, LEDs and all this. So I thought, why we are not using this efficient? Normally, the best would be an earring and we are measuring this around the ear. But Ooh, that's, that'd be cool. This, the battery, it would be, <laughs> it would be too big. Heavy. <laughs> so we, we saw, okay, we studied all the wristband, but with the wristband, you cannot measure through the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Aura is not measuring through the bloodstream, but is using the LEDs to get from the surface of your skin in the bloodstream information. Okay. So I said, if we are doing this, we want to be ahead of Aura. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why we are using four different light sources. Wow. And going in reflection like aura, but also in transmission. Mm -hmm. And the transmission gives you so much more information if you go full through the lower part of the fingers through all the bloodstreams. 
Interesting. So what data can it collect now? Since you have all these extra abilities to through different types of LEDs and so forth, what, what, what data are you able to collect and provide to the, uh, the person wearing this, this ring? So I'm still, I'm still thinking I, that I think the, the like hearing would be pretty fun. And then Swaggy should talk about. Sure. So if you're doing this, you have definitely with a, with a light, the opportunity for the, uh, the heart rate. You have all the opportunity and here comes Swaggy then in what COVID opened us with black oxygen. Swaggy. Aha, absolutely. Yeah, so let's say this. We thought that all the metrics that normally all these other fitness devices does, we should definitely have it. But then we were thinking, what are the additional ones that are really important? And one of the things that actually COVID opened our eyes to is the temperature. Nobody was even thinking of temperature before COVID. And then once COVID hit, temperature and blood oxygen became one of the most yeah. important metrics um, possible. And so those are definitely there in our ring. We want we have temperature, heart rate, uh, blood oxygen. And like Thomas said, there are different LEDs. What's interesting is that since all these LEDs are also producing the PPG waveform, okay. um, that is going to be used to actually measure other metrics. So much fun bringing you Tech Vibe Radio every single Sunday. So glad you made it part of your weekend. We'll be back next Sunday, that's for sure, with so many more awesome stories about Pittsburgh's technology ecosystem. Have an awesome Sunday, everybody. Tech Vibe Radio is coming at you from the Huntington Bank Studios and is made possible by the generous support of our sponsors, Link, Chorus Call, Sea Level, Compunetics, Huntington Bank, My Benefit Advisor, and PNC Bank.